Bass Guitar Review. I'm Kev Sanders and today we're going to be looking at the Chowney Retrovibe Vantage Tony Butler Signature. We may have had to deal with awful haircuts, silly clothes and yuppies in the 1980s, but it was also a golden age for bass, particularly here in the UK. Players like Mark King, Pino, Mick Kahn and of course Tony Butler of Big Country all redefined the role of bass guitar and the status, pun intended, of the bass guitarist. Charlie are pretty much a one-man show, but despite this, they've so far produced some great value and interesting basses at a really good price. Instruments are designed by Charlie's partner, Retrovibe, and to save on costs, the basses are manufactured in India. The Tony Butler Signature is a standard four-string, 34-inch scale bass. It's got a basswood or red cedar body and a full maple neck and fingerboard. It features two humbucker pickups, each with its own volume and passive tone control. This bass is priced at £449, which you also get a Chowney gig bag. But before we go any further, let's check out some more sound clips. First impressions are of a strangely familiar bass. It looks like designers Retrovibe have indulged in a spot of Fantasy League bass here. There's an offset, italicised Ricky-inspired body shape and fret markers, with a fully lacquered precision-type neck and Music Man-style pickups and bridge. Visually, it all works better than it really has any right to. I love the outline and the traditional chrome hardware and that mirror scratch plate adds a touch of rock and roll attitude befitting of the signature on it. Plugging in, it's obvious that this is a rock bass first and foremost, working best when cranked up and played hard with your fingers or especially with a pick. The natural sound of the bass is woody and rounded with a fairly short sustain and that adds up to an unapologetically classic rock voice. Despite the MM style humbuckers, the front pickup has a surprisingly grunty precision quality about it with perhaps a bit more fatness than you'd expect from a passive Fender. The back pickup has a sharper focus and bite it's not drastically different in tone compared to the neck pickup, but its placement close to the bridge predictably gives you more overtones and less low-end flab. Despite appearances, it doesn't sound like a Stingray, but there is some of that character present. Oddly, with both pickups selected and the volumes turned up full, there's a noticeable drop in volume and an apparent narrowing of the frequency response, although backing off one of the pickup volumes seemed to sort this. To me, this suggests the pickups are out of phase with one another, although Charney assured us that everything is exactly as it should be. The smallish, lightweight body 
and hard maple neck with traditional cloverleaf tuners mean the base is a little neck heavy, although it's not really noticeable when strapped on due to the extended top horn. The neck profile feels like a classic 70s P bass and the position of the front pickup is perfect for resting your thumb on if you play in that way. Palm muting is really comfortable too due to the smooth profile of the bridge, whether you're using a pick or your thumb. One of the ways in which Chani has been able to keep the price down on this bass is by using either basswood or red cedar for the body. These are tone woods often used in lower priced instruments. They don't have fancy grain, so they're usually painted as is in the case here. But what they do have is the advantage of lightweight and a neutral and dark sound. The maple for the neck looks good, paling with a straight grain. Pleasingly, the chrome hardware is made by Wilkinson, top quality and a real bonus, something usually only found on much more expensive instruments. If you're a slap specialist or a jazz soloist, you'll probably want to look elsewhere. But if you're a Tony Butler fan, and you should be, this is obviously the bass to have. It will also be perfect for someone who plays in a classic rock covers band and is much less predictable than a standard precision copy. Given the price, it certainly won't break the bank. So this is also a great instrument for someone starting out or perhaps even for a second bass for those occasions when that classic rock or gungy bass sound is needed. Charity have produced an interesting bass here. It's a hybrid of some of the best features of some classic instruments, but with its own voice. A mix and match giving you the cool looks of a Ricky combined with the playability of a precision and the versatility of two pickups, all for under 450 quid. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative. Leave us a comment with your thoughts, subscribe, and don't forget to click on the bell icon if you want to be notified of our future videos. And let us know if there's a piece of bass equipment you'd like to see us feature. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Bass Guitar Review.